Hi, friends. Let's continue our conversation on the topic of cholesterol. And today I want to present you a clinical case that came to my attention a few days ago. And it's about cholesterol lowering medication called azitimide and uh, allergic reaction or reaction that it's created. This drug belongs to category PCSK9 inhibitors. That is, uh, I, I talk about that a little bit in my first presentation. A couple lessons to learn from uh, this video. Lesson number one, I want you to understand when you take some chemical, including medication, sometimes it's not that easy to see cause and effect because there is a gap between something that you, uh, quite often that you take and put it in your mouth and then you're going to have effect. You have to be almost a detector to identify that. Lesson number two, my subscribers know that I am not a big fan of cholesterol lowering medications unless your cholesterol is really high or you have a family history of cardiovascular events. Um, so this person that I uh, consulted do not does not belong into either of those categories. So I just don't understand why this person was prescribed um, this medication. Her cholesterol on the laboratory work was 234. That's not very high. Now, let's talk about clinical case. A couple of weeks ago, I get a mail from a person writing that the person has itchy body probably uh, allergic reaction to something and would like to have a conversation with me. I said, well, yeah, if it's itchy body, probably allergy. So you would be much better going and doing laboratory work and then see what comes there and discontinue the food or you know do some step that uh, will decrease this allergic reaction. Week later, I get email again. The person is writing, the body is itching. And um, I did the laboratory work. And I would like to have a consultation with you. And I am going to pay for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, could be easy money. Because if I need to look at the laboratory work and see something abnormal, they, they, I just would tell you person that you have to discontinue this type of the food. And that's the solution. So on Zoom call, mama with her daughter. Dory speaks perfect English. I think they both are from Albania. So mama does not. And she is a client. She started to have itchy skin about two uh, months ago. And uh, it was okay in the beginning. And it was controlled by um, the, it was controlled by medication, um, H2, um, not H2 blocker, antihistamine medication. But the, the situation is gets worse and worse. And she takes antihistamine now by handful and it just does not work. What she has is, each skin all over the body, head, face, inside the ear, inside the nose, front, back, legs, everywhere. In addition to that, in many creases, uh, the skin, like on the armpits, um, in the groin, on the breast, becomes so thin and so flaky that the actual skin is cracking and the uh, uh, white clear fluid is oozing out of that and it's extremely painful so mama cannot sleep i said well could you please send me a laboratory work to take a picture send it to me and in the meanwhile just go and check uh, uh, mama's bed for bed bugs so she did and she sent me a picture and i looked at the picture of laboratory work yeah so there is no um uh, allergic reaction and also what's interesting, eosinophils, the white blood cells that represent the allergic reaction are a top normal number. So maybe yes, there is allergic reaction, but nothing special. When I used to teach in medical school, I told the students, never treat the laboratory work, but never disregard. I become now more interested in this case because on one hand, we have a person who is itching. On the other hand, we have a laboratory work uh, that is there is no allergic reaction as xenophils are normal. So there is no allergy to any food or an environmental allergy. So 
when you are thinking about itching body, as a physician, you have to think about four things. Number one, bites. Number two, uh, environmental allergy. Number uh, three, contact dermatitis. And four, food and drinks allergy. Bites could be uh, bed bugs, flea, mites, and scabies. And they usually come in form of a, 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 a kind of elevated um, elevated uh, bite. I asked the person, and she showed me, said, no, the, the lady showed me the, the chest, and it's, there are scratches here, but the skin does not look like there are any bites. There is a, a few pimples here that not in acne. They showed up during this period of time, two, two last months. They look like bites, but not exactly. They're here, there, but no, no other places in the body. So bites are eliminated. Environmental allergies, Usually, they all come here. Dust, pollen from trees, from grass, person breathes in. So all the symptoms are right here. Eyes, nose, throat, nothing of the sort. What we have left out of the four, we have contact dermatitis and we have food. Contact dermatitis is um, usually you ask the uh, person, is there any new detergent or drying substance that you put in your dryer? maybe chemicals that come with that, that you come into contact and that's create and this each skin. So, you know, person is lying down. So contact dermatitis could be anywhere here on the head, in the ear, on the face. I thought maybe those bumps are here um, and all over the body. So we talked about that. No, everything more or less the same. Nothing changes. Maybe new pajama. No. So, out of the four, we have left one is food. In order to identify food that creates this allergic-like reaction um, that not registered on the laboratory work, so the, the foods that were listed there, like most common five or six types of fish, shrimp, so none of that. So you need to interrogate the patient, person. You need to ask, what do you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks, what do you drink? and try to educate person at the same time. You need to tell them that your diet have to be a sparkling clean. What I mean is you have to eliminate possible chemicals that may create this reaction. Herbicides, pesticides, coloring agents from preservatives. Um, so all of that have to be eliminated. So you, what you do, you buy, so clean food. So you buy chicken, you buy a piece of meat, it could be fresh or uh, frozen, cook it. You can add their vegetables, preferably organic to make sure there's no herbicides or pesticides. And then you add complex carbohydrates such as um, buckwheat, which is considered hyperallergenic. And you do this diet for two weeks and see clinically, are you getting better? If you are getting better, that means that um, something you put in your mouth that creates this reaction all over the body and you are itching, basically. So as I talk to, uh, 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 to a client, nothing strikes my eye. So the lady lives in the same household. She shops at the same uh, uh, grocery store or, or the market. Um, um, nothing new, not much comes from the can, not much cold cuts that, you know, if she is that occasionally, maybe once or twice per week. So I'm thinking about um, coloring agents. Um, no. Uh, what do you drink? There is no soft drinks there. Um, no, uh, you know, no juices. Okay. What kind of problems also mama has? Does she have any digestive problems, constipation, diarrhea, dances? Um, well, not exactly. But before this ordeal start with this allergy, mama used to be on constipated side. So she had stool maybe once every two or three days and she used to take stool softeners. But now she has more um, stool like two or three times per day. It's not very well so um, formed, but it's not a diarrhea per se. So, hmm. I'm thinking, this is symptom. So for this lady who was more constipated and now she has more, you know, stool coming two or three times, but it means that she puts something in the mouth and the digestive tract, so it goes there and it tries to get rid of that, get rid of that. And how does it get rid of that? You have a stool more often, 
right? So it gives me one more thinking about that. Yes, in, in the direction. Yes, it's something that she's eating or drinking. And I press in the, you know, the um, mom and daughter. So what is that? What is that? Think about that. What else mama has? Mama is taking um, Centroid medication for seven years. Okay, is this the same medication? Yes, it's the same medication, the same pharmacy, the same blister pack from the same pharmaceutical company. I was thinking maybe the new pharmaceutical company and there is new chemical there. The answer is no. Also, mama went to her primary care physician in the beginning of the year, she thinks maybe at the end of January, mid-February. And uh, the laboratory was done during the time and mom is okay, she's healthy. Uh, there was a little bit elevated cholesterol, 234 to 35, I don't remember. And the primary care physician prescribed a medication and she started to take it. I said, which medication? When did she start to take it? She said, oh, um, so if she was in the early, mid-February, so she maybe started the end of February medication. So which one? Uh, and by the way, when the when this allergy kind of started, said, oh, two months, maybe two and a half months ago. And so let's say uh, March, April, May, we have now May, so three months. Tell me more about this medication. So she goes in, into the uh, into the kitchen and picks up the medication and she tells me that the name of the medication is Azitimib. I said, hmm, I'm not sure that I know this medication. I Google it later. It turns out that um, I don't know because the medication is not prescribed in the United States or Canada. So I uh, immediately put that uh, into Google and uh, UK website, this is UK website, comes up. And I'm looking at that website and I see here, oh, here you go with diarrhea. I said, hmm, she has unstable stool three times per day. That's a, that's a kind of interesting. As I scroll down, I see this, right? Skin rash that may include each swallow skin, blistered and peeling skin. Here we have, I said, we have, we have to discontinue this medication. So now I will tell you more about what happens when they discontinue medication, but I want to tell you and explain you. It's still not clear in like in my mind. Why is that there is such discrepancy between each skin and patient presented such a, you know, cracks and painful skin and absolutely uh, almost normal laboratory work, no uh, immunoglobulin, you know, allergic reaction and azinophils are normal. For that is, let's go to the blackboard and I will explain you um, there. As always, I already pre-draw for us uh, the, uh, my favorite picture of the digestive tract. This is the mouse, this is the teeth, and this is the medication coming. My subscribers do know that liver is the organ that produces cholesterol on demand. Cholesterol get excreted out of the uh, liver into the small intestine in form, in form of bile salts. This bile, bile salts emulsify the fat, they'll help to absorb the fat, and then they also, uh, bile salts and, or cholesterol get absorbed back into the bloodstream and will go again into the liver and will get used in re and reuse. So I will draw a picture of the, the small intestine here. It's a little bit better, bigger that they can explain the concept of what's going on here. So the lining of the digestive tract or digestive tract line is by cells called enterocytes. And enterocytes are usually um, very nice and healthy, square one. This is the one cell with nucleus. This is the other and this is the third one. On the surface of enterocytes, there are different receptors. And this receptor is for cholesterol. So this cholesterol comes here and sits on this receptor. This is your cholesterol. Get incorporated through the receptor into enterocytes and then get released back into circulation. And then through the circulation, will go back into the, into the liver and get used and reused. So this is the cycle of um, reusing cholesterol. This particular medication, what it does, it blocks this receptor. My suspicion that not only this medication block the receptor, but also in the process probably damage the cells, enterocytes. And rather than looking that nice and square, they look like that. So here's on one side and here's the damaged enterocytes on the other side. The part of the damage or irritation this enterocytes is the gaps get formed into between the cells. And through these gaps, 
big pieces undigested of undigested protein. Let's say this is big of big piece of protein, undigested protein, get absorbed through this gap into the bloodstream. And here we go. This is a big piece of protein that does not belong in the bloodstream. And because it's too big, it's not detected as an allergy, just too big. Okay, so <clears throat> that cannot be there in the bloodstream, period. What happened to immune system? Uh, looking at that, and it starts to produce immune globulin G to neutralize that. This complex called, uh, let me write it here, IgG. It's immune globulin G. This complex, uh, protein and immune globulin G called antigen antibody complex, floating in the blood, and because it's too big, it just cannot be excreted through the kidney. So it has to go someplace. And in this particular uh, that person, it's it goes right here under the skin. Here is your big piece of protein with immunoglobulin G get deposited here in the skin. Does not belong there. Immune system walks around and say, hey, listen, this is the foreign body and start to produce next a, a bunch of immunoglobulin G. Right? Because part of the proteins that are leaking here maybe a, a proteins from uh, meat, from fish or dairy. And because they uh, they end up here in the blood and they uh, they create immunoglobulin E. That's which immunoglobulin creates, um, you know, it's allergic reaction. But it's not the major representation in this case. This big gaps and this big proteins that go here in the bloodstream and get deposited here, that's the major reaction. Also, the patient, the person is taking tons of antihistamine, so suppressing production of immunoglobulin E and eosinophils. So the major reaction is actually in the skin by immunoglobulin G, not by uh, immunoglobulin E. So that's why you see the discrepancy. Very painful skin, especially in the creases, oozing uh, uh, fluid, and uh, not too much of allergic reaction, although she is, she is itching. So person is itching, laboratory work is normal, and uh, antihistamine is not helping. So it's all by immune reaction due to increased digestive tract permeability due to damage of this medication. Now person discontinued medication five days ago. I am uh, uh, emailing with the daughter every single day. Uh, mama is getting a little bit better in two ways. Number one, skin is less itchy. So that's already a big plus. Number two, the places where there were cracks and oozing the fluid, um, they get close and dry. New problem, unfortunately, arrived because when it's get dry, uh, you know, under armpit, in, in the groin, around the rectum, um, when the skin gets stretched, because skin is still extremely sensitive and extremely thin, and the scab get formed. So that scab breaks and it creates a pain. So what we do, we decided to treat it with uh, vitamin E and maybe first aid cream. So she will be applying that topically. Uh, uh, also, I decided to uh, give, um, I was thinking about two supplements to help to heal the digestive tract because digestive tract is where they get major damage. So we eliminate the cause, we eliminated the drug. She's already better, but the damage to digestive tract is happened. So what I decided to do to give her um, two supplements. Number one is L-glutamine and number two probiotic. But I told you, hold on probiotic with prebiotic because there are cases in the literature described when the people taking a probiotic, they actually kind of um, get an um, um, infection from, from those prebiotics. So we are holding on prebiotic and she's taking L-glutamine to repair the lining of digestive tract. Okay, so guys, I hope this is clear. That's all that I wanted to tell you. If you have any questions, please ask me here. Like, subs like subscribe, and all relative information in the description um, below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.